So does this imply that consciousness can't be found in silicon chips or in any other material, but only in the specific biological structures found in living brains? Or couldn't the specific arrangement of brain parts that create consciousness itself be a lucky accident? After all, when we talk about the patterns and functions of our brains, rather than the exact biological materials, we're talking about something that could theoretically be copied. This is where Bernbacher makes an interesting point. He suggests that there's no obvious reason why a brain made of silicone couldn't potentially develop consciousness just like our carbon-based brain. When you think about it logically, there's no bulletproof argument against a silicone computer brain becoming conscious. But then again, there's also no bulletproof argument that it would definitely become conscious. So this is where things get tricky. If we focus only on copying the patterns and structures of the brain and ignoring the actual biological materials, are we missing something important? People who support the function is everything view claim that what we're leaving out doesn't matter. But how can we be sure what matters until we've considered everything that we're not including? It's like saying that you could build a perfect working car using plastic instead of metal just because you've copied the design. Maybe the materials actually do matter in ways that we don't yet understand. Perhaps the function of the brain and its physical materials are more deeply connected than we realize. So is downplaying the whole material substrate requirement Lately, it seems like functionalists have been the majority when it comes to this debate, but there have always been some philosophers who really emphasize those material elements.